back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm in the kitchen today, and if I'm being completely honest, I have procrastinated and procrastinated and procrastinated. I'm doing this video, one, to show somebody in case they haven't done it, but it's really more about accountability for me. I'm in the kitchen today, and I'm going to do something that I'm really, really intimidated by, and I thought turning on the camera, making the video would make me just go ahead and do it and get over my fear and just be done. So I'm in the kitchen today and we're gonna make two recipes all involving bread. So we're gonna do like some sub rolls and we're also gonna do pie crust. And you may think, okay, what's the big deal? Here's the big deal, y'all. So remember this channel is called A Gardener's Journey. And so this is part of my journey. So in terms of, you know, me kind of creating a homestead lifestyle, I've started to grow food, obviously. But one of the things is also taking the food that we grow and using it in the kitchen. But really, even more importantly than that, I've had this desire. And it's, this has happened in the last like 30 days. And it's really been heavy on my mind and it has to be the lord and the holy spirit is to really begin cooking more from scratch um and learning how and really up level my skills in the kitchen now most people say that i'm a good cook so i i mean i cook i cook all the time so cooking is not a big deal for me but when it comes to baking and bread making and like things from scratch that has not always been my forte right so just to kind of give you history if you're very brand new here i've only been gardening for the last three years um we've been on this property for four years before that we lived in a city um traditional working couple we were both um working i was working in a very high level corporate job so cooking from scratch and baking bread and making bread that was not my life okay so even though i'm 40 something i have never made pie crust um i've never um made like sub rolls or, or what we're going to do today i've never made that before and so I'm intimidated and I am fearful. So I'm being completely vulnerable, completely transparent. Um, but it's something that I know that I need to do and I want to be able to do it. Not that I won't buy a pie crust from the store, not that I won't buy sub rolls from the store, but if I know how to make it, then it puts another skill and tool in my belt and it's going to be healthier for my family. So as I'm kind of going through this fall and winter season, obviously the garden content slows down quite a bit because there's just not much going on in the fall and winter when it comes to the garden. You know, things don't change as fast. You don't have as many things to discuss. Um, and so I always spend a lot of time in the house, in the kitchen and using like the slower pace to really um, explore in the kitchen, test new recipes. And I have a goal to just up level my skills um and so certainly if that resonates with you join me on this journey if you are past that and you're an expert leave me some tips and comments down below okay so um in terms of bread you guys know that um i do bake bread every week i do sourdough and that was intimidating at first of all i keep telling myself that sourdough was the same way Although I look back on it now and I'm like, it's like easy peasy <laughs> to me. But I was intimidated to start my sourdough. And I didn't start it on video. I did it at home before I, I told you guys and, and brought. But this, I'm going to actually, I'm going to do it with you. Um, if it works, 100% great. If not, then we're going to keep trying until we get it, okay? Um, but in terms of bread, so I'm very comfortable with sourdough. And a lot of people are intimidated by sourdough and feel very uncomfortable with sourdough. Me, I got sourdough in terms of bread making. I make a loaf every single week. I actually have a, a loaf over there um, on its final rise right now that's about to go in the oven in the next hour or so. So I got that. But when it comes to using yeast in bread, I have not been <laughs> successful. Um, and so I wanna master it, I wanna get it. But today we are gonna do pie crust um, because I want my own pie crust. 
Um, and I've heard that it's super, super easy. I've, ne I've just never done it before. I've always bought it, you know, and just did it that way. But we're gonna attempt pie crust. But the first thing we're gonna do, because it, this is gonna take a little bit longer, is we're gonna do like some sub rolls, right? So what I wanna make for dinner tonight, and trust me, I got a backup plan if it doesn't work. What I wanna make for, t for dinner tonight is like some Philly steak, um, um, sandwiches or whatever. We, we have those maybe once every couple of weeks and I usually just buy the sub rolls from the store. But I'm thinking, you know what? It's cold outside. I don't feel like going to the store. Like when it's cold, I just want to be in the house. So I'm like, I saw a recipe. Let me try and make it. But here's the backup. If for some reason they don't turn out, we're going to have hamburgers and fries instead of sub rolls and fries. That's what we're going to have. So um, let's get started. So I have my handy little recipe um, here and let's just, and I have this, let's see, I have this instant yeast, but I also have some active dry yeast in my freezer that I just bought from Azure Standard. This has probably been in my counter. Um, I don't know. We're going to use this. I probably had this a couple of months. Hopefully it's still good. Okay. So we're going to make. Some people call them hoagie rolls, sub rolls, which you would eat on a sub sandwich. That bread, that's what we're making, okay? So, let's get started. So, it says um, three and a half cups, three and a half to four cups of bread flour. It sounds relatively easy, so. Let's start with, uh-oh. We'll start with three and a half cups. Okay, see, I'm glad I looked at the directions because it says to start with two cups of flour, okay? If you're using the instant yeast. So, let's see. See, reading is fundamental. And it's one of those things like with cooking, like if you give me like a basic recipe or if you just tell me the ingredients, I can pretty much handle it. And I'll probably do it the first time like you tell me that after that I'll freestyle, right? Now, I've heard a lot of times with baking, you kind of have to be exact. And maybe that's just because I don't know what I'm doing. Two cups of flour. And then on water, it says one and one fourth cups plus two tablespoons of warm water. And then the sugar and then the instant yeast. Okay. Okay. I'm back. So, testing my water. It says warm water. Okay, so I'm putting in the water and then it says two tablespoons of sugar. And this is just cane sugar I'm using. Okay, so that's two tablespoons of sugar and then it says the one packet of the yeast. And I'm using the instant yeast. Okay, I got my dough hook in there. And then it says <clears throat> to mix on low. Start off on low and then mix for 40 minutes. <clears throat> okay, so it mixed for four minutes. Why it needs four minutes? I don't know. I'm assuming that with anything, if you do bread type stuff a lot, that there's a pattern and it starts to make sense. I'm just I'm just dump, dumping diving into the deep end. Okay, so it's, then it says add in the salt, and then how much salt do we need? We need one teaspoon. Okay, so we got the salt, and then it says to um, add in one cup at a time of the remaining flour. So I got two cups left. So we'll add in a cup. And then it says to go for five to six minutes. And it says it should be on medium speed. Okay, I'm back. So it's I did it for five 
minutes and it said to do it until it was slack and it shows a picture of what the slack means like almost like a blob so let me see if i can i can't show you because i'm afraid i'm gonna mess this up okay we'll see the final product okay so now it says to add in butter and we got to do four tablespoons and it says to add in a but um one tablespoon at a time and mix until fully melted in before adding the next tablespoon so we're and it says in total mix for one to three minutes or until the dough comes back together and pulls completely away from the side and it's smooth and shiny so we're going to keep doing that and i'll bring you back once it's done and then we'll go to the next step okay y'all i think it's done now the thing that i saw is that it seems like it was hard for the butter to be incorporated like it just kind of stayed on the side until i turned up the speed and um then it whatchamacallit it kind of incorporated in so i'm just gonna put it in this bowl it says to put it in a grease bowl i guess so that it doesn't stick so and it said until it's smooth and shiny it's definitely smooth and shiny you guys can kind of see it let me get it out but i feel like it's supposed to be like more dry than this it's very sticky oh i don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be y'all a mess <laughs> uh it's real sticky as you can see um i don't know if it's supposed to be sticky it doesn't say y'all this is why okay let me just show you what it looks like this is what it looks like it says to um let's see cover the bowl until doubled in size which is an hour so let's do that i'm gonna cover it um for an hour wash my hands and i'll come back I covered it with some plaster wrap for an hour. I'm like, is this right or not? This is why I'm intimidated. It like, it just seems like, I don't know if I need more instructions. <laughs> I don't know what I need, but it says until it's smooth and shiny. It was smooth and it was shiny. So I'm thinking if it's shiny, then it can't be dry because shine would indicate some type of moisture. This is how I'm logically thinking through it. I guess I'm used to, if when I've done, some type of bread before when it says pull away, it's like dry and like a ball that you can go ahead and shape and all that. But maybe that's not the way it's supposed to be. We're going to see in an hour if it actually rises and doubles. If it doesn't, I don't know what I could have done wrong. It said the butter needed to be cold. It was cold. It seems like it would have melted in better if it was softened, but you can't have softened butter that's cold. So I don't know. We'll check back in in the hour and see if it doubled let's get ready for our next recipe which is the pie crust and i'm actually going to do that in the food processor so i'm going to clean this up and get ready for our next recipe hey y'all we're back so we're going to make pie crust um and this recipe that i'm using makes two crusts which is going to be perfect so i want to have pie crust remember um probably i don't know two or three weeks ago i did that apple pie filling and i did it in the shape of the pie pan and it's in the freezer so i want to bake an apple pie using my own pie crust so let's get to it um i saw plenty of recipes for pie crust they all have the basic same ingredients same re um, ratio so for this particular one we're using all-purpose flour and it says two and a half cups of all-purpose flour and we're using the food processor so when i saw that you could use a food processor and i didn't have to knead it with my hands and make it all nice and stuff i was like this is the recipe for me and for y'all who are experienced bakers you probably already knew that but i never knew you could make pie crust in the food processor so i was in okay so it says mix the flour and then we need a teaspoon of salt where's my little thing this recipe seems a little bit more straightforward a teaspoon of salt two tablespoons of sugar
and then butter. Um, you want to use cold butter that I do know from like making biscuits and stuff like that. Now I have made homemade biscuits. Um, you always want your butter to be cold and anytime you're doing a pie crust, you want it to be cold. And I take that back. I have done a pie crust before. Let me get this butter in here and I'll tell you about that. I remembered I have done a pie crust before, but I have um, a cup of butter cut into cubes. It's cold. And so it says to add the cold butter and pulse until the butter is the size of peas. So basically we're just like cutting the butter up even more. Okay, it's still a little bit too big. So until it's like the size of peas. See, that's pretty straightforward. So I don't know if you can see but it's like the size of peas. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so then we gotta add, this recipe that I'm using at, um, uses cold water, a half a cup. So it says to slowly add the water until the dough forms. Be careful not to overmix. So let's just... It looks like it's okay. so I think it's ready. It says not to over mix, so I'm gonna err on the side of caution. It says to put it in a on a lightly floured surface. It looks like though. I don't know. I feel like it may need some more water. I don't know. Let's just turn it out and see. It's hard, it's not soft. So I don't know if it's supposed to be soft I definitely have a dough and it says to um, cut it in half. So I'm just gonna use this to do it in half. And then it says form each half into a disc about an inch thick. So let me get a little bit more flour just so I can keep it. And this is where I'm just making, like, it says to make it about an inch thick. I feel like it's, and again, because I don't have a lot of experience with dough making and dough using, everything, like with the sourdough, by the time you get to this point, you want it to be soft. This, I feel like it's too hard. Like it's not soft. Mm, but maybe that's okay. I don't know. Y'all, this is why I don't do this. Oh my goodness. Because you can freeze this or put it in the refrigerator if I was going to bake it now. So I am going to wrap this one in plastic. Then I'm going to put the other one back in there and add a little bit more water and see if it gets softer. And I'll have one of each. That way, I'll know. Let me grab the plastic wrap. I feel like I'm all over the place. But you know something? When you're doing something that is not your strong suit, this is what it feels like. You feel unsure of yourself. You feel uncomfortable. Like all the things. All right, so the only thing I think that could be off is the texture, but maybe the texture isn't off. So it's like a little round disc like that. Now from here, you can put it in the freezer um, and then when you get ready to use it, just thaw it in the refrigerator overnight is what the directions say. 
or it says to refrigerate for 30 minutes if you want to use it right away. I guess so it'll be cold. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator because I think I'm going to try to bake my pies today. We'll see. I'm going to put this one in the refrigerator and then mm, I'm going to put this one back in there and just test it and see. Now, some of y'all might be screaming through <laughs> the phone saying, no, don't put it back in there. But this is how you learn, right? I'm gonna put it back in there, add a little bit more water and just see if it'll get softer. If it messes it up, I got more flour. I guess I could do it again, right? Let's just see y'all, let's just see. Y'all. It's wetter a little bit. So the wet part is, y'all, just a whole complete mess. But I guess when you're dealing with dough, you, you ain't gonna be clean. Let me get some more flour. Now, for those who have watched me for quite some time, you know in the garden, I'm way more comfortable than this. Okay, it is a little bit softer where the, um, where it got wet some, but overall it's still the same hardness, so to speak, like firmness. So I'm just gonna go with it. And maybe because of the cold butter and the cold butter is hard, I don't know. Let me put some flour on my hands. So we're gonna keep it. About an inch thick. Okay, y'all, we have this one out ready for the refrigerator so we're gonna okay this is gonna go in the freezer we're gonna clean this up and we only have seven minutes to go back to our um to our hoagie rolls the timer just went off so let me show you our dough it rolls y'all it rose i'm so excited so we're just gonna put this on a lightly floured surface it still feels like it's, I don't know, it's super soft. Like my pie crust was more hard than what I thought. This is like super, super soft. So I'm gonna divide this, let me, I'm gonna divide this, let's see, in half. Yeah, like super, use a lot of flour, but I'm just gonna use my instinct, which that's what cooking is. Um, a lot of time is there's a recipe as a guideline but you just got to use your instinct and if that's wrong you have to just try again that's some of the principles of cooking so I know what it says but it doesn't feel right to me so I added a little bit more flour because I think it'll be easier to work with instead of it being so sticky so I'm dividing it again that's in fourths and then I'm gonna divide it again so that I'll have eight. And I'm thinking that should be enough. Now, on the instructions, once again, it was saying to flatten it out to, yeah, that feels much better. It was saying to flatten it out to a rectangle and then it was saying to fold it like an envelope into thirds and all that i mean those directions got real confusing real 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 confusing um let me just try it their way it said to fold it down like that oh i see what it's trying to say okay but i'm thinking about how i make a log for sandwich bread to me, it should be the same concept, I would think, except thinner. I don't know what y'all think. I'm totally just doing my own thing on this one. What I'm gonna do at this point is just try to get a smooth log where the seams are not showing and tucking it under. That's what I'm gonna do. And try to make them roughly the same size. 
I don't know how much it's going to rise. I'm assuming that it'll rise up, but I wonder will it rise that way too. I want it to be like a six inch hoagie roll, like a standard hoagie roll. So... I got them all shaped. You can see they're pretty much, most of them are the same size. Some are a little longer like this one, but it says to let them rise for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna cover them with some plastic wrap and I'll preheat the oven because it says not to overproof. So whenever they get done, we'll go ahead and bake them. We're gonna let these hang out here I'm going to preheat the oven to 375, get my kitchen back in order and cleaned up, and then we'll be um, ready to go when they're ready. Okay, y'all, so it's been about 40 minutes. Let me show you. They definitely rose, so this is how they look. And so now the final step, and this is completely optional, is to make slashes in them. So kind of like what you do for um, sourdough. Like I said, this is completely optional, um, but it'll help it for the air to expand and not to be um, like bubbly in one place. Uh, so I'm just using a lane, which is what you would um, normally use. And it's been a while since I've used this because I make sourdough sandwich bread, not the, um, what you call it, the round loaf a lot anymore. But when I did, I used to use, I used to use a, a lane to put the little decorations in the bread. So I'm just making a slash down the middle. And this lane is not as sharp as it needs to be. Let's put them in the oven. So while we're waiting on the bread, I thought we would go ahead and do our pie. Y'all, I'm really put I'm, I'm really pushing the limits today. So I have our pie crust that's been in the refrigerator. I have our pie plate, and then I have our apple pie filling. So let's first again never done this before. So I got some parchment paper because I don't want to mess up another dish. Lightly floured surface. And let's see if I can roll this out. I don't know why in my mind I'm thinking it should be soft. Like very pliable. And it's not. And I don't know why. I mean with simple ingredients. Flour, salt, butter, um, water, now one recipe did call for like buttermilk, which I don't use buttermilk, but I know how to make it. It's just um, milk and lemon juice. So maybe that would have made it softer instead of the water. I hope that somebody, whoever I got this recipe from, didn't leave out an ingredient, mm -hmm. you know? But it said water. Everything else was pretty much the same except water versus buttermilk. Uh, but maybe the milk part would have made it softer. I don't know. Okay, that feels more like a crust. It's certainly not. Let's just see if we can make it into the right shape. Let's see. Mm. It's not completely all up on the top, all around the sides. Hmm, maybe I should roll it out more. I know that some of you are probably like this girl, but you know what? This is how you learn. And if nothing else, this is for somebody who is just like me, that's intimidated on these kinds of things. And maybe your thing is not baking, maybe it's just cooking. And then you have somebody like me who was comfortable cooking, saying it's not that big of a deal. Just get in there and just, you know, cook by instinct or, you know, do the best that you can. 
I'm doing the best that I can, y'all, for this to be my first time. And I told y'all I had made oh, a pie crust before, but it tasted like, this is like, I don't know, it probably was a year ago. It tasted like trash. It didn't have enough taste to it, if that makes sense. Y'all, I'm thinking this is supposed to come up on the sides all the way around. I don't know why. It's not necessarily doing that, but we got it for the most part. So let me keep doing this part, get it all nice and prettied up before. Okay, the best I could do. So let's go ahead and roll out the other one. So that way it'll be ready when we get ready to put the apple pie fill in there. So let me go grab that out of the refrigerator. I was trying to keep that cool. Okay, so remember this is the one that I put back in there and added a little bit more water. Okay, add a little bit more flour. So this is the one that I had that I put back in there, right? And added some water to see if it would get softer. That's just being, I don't know. You can call it lazy, efficient, call it whatever you want. But that's what I was doing. So let me finish rolling this out. Okay, so that one was easier to do. So I don't know if that's because um, I had put it back in there and it was a little bit softer, just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and prick the bottom of this crust just because I've seen other people do that. Okay, that was my timer for the sourdough bread. Let me show you. I pulled that out while we were um while we were um doing the pie crust. So there's my loaf for the week. You can see it didn't rise as much just because when I did my start it wasn't a hundred percent like bub like as active as I needed to be, but it still rose enough. That that pan is pretty tall, so that I can do no issues. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so I pricked the crust. This is our apple pie filling. So if you didn't see the video, I'll try to remember to pop it up here. But I did a video where we did apple pie filling and then we put it in the freezer in the shape of the pie plate, so that when it was time to bake the pie, like now. Um, all we had to do was to take it out and put it in the pie crust like that. So it fits perfectly. Okay, now let's try to, yikes, it's falling apart a little bit. Let's try to lift our pie crust. Oh, it's a little sticky. Again, I don't know if, oh my, y'all, it is completely fell apart. Do y'all see that? What the heck? Okay. I told y'all, I'm not going to give up. I'm just going to roll it out again. I'll be back. It was actually softer when I rolled it back out again because I added a little bit more flour. I had to because it was sticky. Now, I have the crust on top. Now, it's how do you make it pretty. Y'all, oh my goodness. How do you make it pretty is the question. And again, I'm going by instinct. Cause I've never done this before. Kind of like just putting it in there and then trying to make the end part like I see <laughs> when I buy the pies in the store with that crust. So my question is, I wonder how do you get it smooth? 
Maybe if I had more crust and it would have lapped over, maybe then it would have been smooth. It's not like all together is what I mean. Like the top is not smooth. You can tell like where the top and the bottom crust meet. Now when it comes to edibility, which I don't think that's a word, when it comes to eating it, I don't think it's gonna affect the taste. Y'all, it looked like a real pie. Does it not? Okay. I'm curious to see how it's gonna taste. The crust, the filling, all of that. But this is a homemade apple pie. Like, we, the only thing that's not homemade is that we didn't grow the apples ourselves. We got them from the orchard, but we did the filling, we did the crust, so it's a homemade apple pie. My goal was to have this for Thanksgiving, but y'all, coming back from Australia, I've been jet lagged. I'm just now starting to feel um, semi like myself, semi. And so that's why I'm in the kitchen today, trying to force myself to stay awake all during the day and to just get some other stuff done and play around in the kitchen. This has been all afternoon, y'all. <sighs> but I guess if I was more confident, it would have gone quicker, right? That's what I'm telling myself. Okay, so. The bread is almost done. I can smell it. It smells good, especially the bread that just came out. So we got the sourdough bread that we know is good because we've done that many a times. I looked at the hoagie rolls. They're all different shapes and sizes. But let's give it a few more minutes and I'll let you see the final product. And then we're going to put this in the oven. But, but look, y'all, not too shabby. Y'all, moment of truth. Took the sub rolls out. I'm going to let you see them. So they're all different shapes and sizes, but they don't look too bad. Now I wouldn't serve this to company, but I am gonna serve it to my family. We about to have these filling steaks. So let me grab a pot holder and show y'all. See, they're all different shapes and sizes. You can see that the ones here, like that's the very last one that I did. Like this one is the very last one I did. That is the most, similar of a sub row shape. My lane you see wasn't um, sharp enough because it didn't have the hole. It got a little bit of a design, but not a hole, but let's cut one. And this has been cooling for like, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. So. And you can see the bottom, bottom is brown. I put a little butter on it. The inside is done. Okay, I'm gonna take a piece of a one that's like, so like, look at this shape. Can you still fill it and put something in it? You can, it's just not a traditional sub shape, but we'll use this one as our test to see what it tastes like. So, not the traditional shape, but you can still fill it with something. But let's just take a little piece and taste it. See what it tastes like. That's good, y'all. That's good. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks just like a soap bro, y'all. It has a great taste. Honey, yeah. come taste this. It has a great shape, a great taste. It tastes just like a soap bro, except it's homemade. It almost tastes like fresher and lighter. Yeah, I'm gonna do this again because all I gotta do now is get the shape. That's all I gotta do is get the shape down to where they look like sub rolls. Your girl can make these, put them, look, look, you see how my confidence then came up? Okay, babe, come, 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 come around. It's good. Now my husband loves bread. He think bread is a complete meal, so. It is. <laughs> it's a sub roll, the taste is off. I mean, the shape is off, but. Yeah, whatever piece. That's good. It tastes like regular sub roll bread, doesn't it? Uh, that's that's whole point. That's good. So I got this shape right, but mm. that was the first one that I formed. I was trying to get my. Mm -hmm. So all I gotta do is get the shape right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Very good. Taste okay. Describe the taste. It's soft. Soft. Mm-hmm. It is soft. 
I don't know if that's butter on it or what. But yeah, I put a little butter on, on the top. It's it's just I mean I don't know how to explain. It doesn't like, like a, a clean, fresh yeah, taste. Like there's yeah. no extra mm -mm. fillers. Like you don't taste anything in the background. It's just like a clean, simple yeah. taste. Mm -hmm. Y'all, you could put some jelly on this and eat it. You could put some garlic butter on this and eat it alongside your bread. Because mm -hmm. I mean, shape is just telling you what it is, right? If I make sandwich loaf bread, it tells you sandwich loaf because I put it in that shape. But bread, good bread is good bread. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will do these again, y'all. I will do these again. Mm -hmm. So, one final, one final look. Taste is on point. Mm -hmm. Just got to, so y'all got some tips on how to get the, the, the right shape, which I did it here. This is like a perfect sub roll shape. It could be a little bit bigger, but... I'm gonna toast these up with some butter like I do all my bread when I'm making sandwiches. I'm about to make this Philly steak mixture. We're gonna have these with some french fries and then we got apple pie. Oh, I didn't tell my husband about the apple pie. I got apple pie in the oven. That's one of his favorites. Y'all, we, we about to wrap this kitchen day up. Do you see how when things are done and it's halfway decent, how, how, how my confidence is coming back? But this is what it takes, y'all. Say apple pie. Apple pie, baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. Homemade mm -hmm. apple pie. Y'all, okay. it's a good day. <laughs> okay, I was going to end this right here. Because this I feel like this has been long. I've been in the kitchen for hours, y'all. Hours. Only because I had some time on my hands today. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this Philly steak stuff. Um, and then that'll give us a chance to have the apple pie out so I can give you like the final, final, final. So, um, I'll fast forward, meaning I'll come back when it's all like done, ready, and I'll give you one final look before I end the video. I mean, you've been hanging with me this long. That's the least I can do, right? That's the least I can do. So you see the bread, but let's see how it all comes together. Okay, y'all, I call myself plating it up and I... Thought I hit the camera button, but I didn't. But that is the Philly steak. So basically, you can dress it up however you want to, but I put mayonnaise, barbecue sauce, jalapeno salt. You can see the filling. And this is vegetarian because we don't eat um, meat. So this is a vegetarian and I just, it's um, steak strips that you can buy that are veggie and I just season them up like you would a regular Philly steak, peppers and onions cheese so you can kind of see that's what it looks like there on the nice bread let's it's a little messy because i mean that's what a philly che cheese steak is right it's messy so let's take a bite and see what it tastes like So good. Y'all, that bread is so soft. So soft. That bread is a winner. Winner. Just took the apple pie out of the oven. Let me show you. What it's looking like. It looks good. So. Gotta let that cool off. Got fries that just beat in the air fryer. So this is dinner tonight. Something very simple because I've been in the kitchen all day. Fill a cheesesteak, some fries on the side, and then apple pie for dessert. We gotta let that cool off and see how the apple pie tastes. Hey y'all, we've eaten dinner. I done got into this pie. Now I was a little afraid to go and take the first bite on camera because I'm like, okay, is it gonna be good? Is it gonna be good? Y'all, this pie is the bomb. Okay, first of all, Okay, I've already eaten like a fourth of it. The crust is excellent. It tastes, this is the best. I finally got pie crust right. Remember I kept saying that I felt like it was hard or whatever? It tastes so good. Now, I'm just feeling, do y'all do that? 
I know it's rude to eat on camera, but let me tell you something. This is so good. All I need is some ice cream. I really don't even need that. The filling is fantastic. Fantastic. I want to try to find this video where I did the filling. Because let me tell you something. If you like apple pie, you need to consider doing that filling the way that I did it. The fact that it was in the freezer already in the shape of the pie pan made it easy. So if I would have had these pie crusts on deck already and didn't have to make them today, I literally could have gone to my freezer, gotten the pie crust, gotten the pie filling, and had a homemade apple pie on the table within an hour. So I baked it at 350. It took about an hour and five minutes, and it's something perfect. Now, the pie is not real saucy and runny, which that's the way I like it. So if you were doing it, you may want to make your filling more saucy, runny. Like Here's the consistency of the filling. So, And there's not a lot of big chunks of apples. I did them a little smaller because, again, I'm always about the crust and the filling. Like, this is perfect for me. It has the perfect texture, the perfect combination of apples. The apples taste great. We used Golden Delicious. My husband's like, look, I, you, you still talking on this video. I ain't got time for you to finish. I'm about to come in here and get me some pie right now. That's right. <laughs> He's like, you yapping and you talking. Y'all, I'm so happy with this pie y'all so happy it tastes so good now my husband loves apple pie peach cobble is like my favorite but now i got this crust hey it's on and popping i'm gonna let my husband taste it see what he say but i mean i hope he like it but if he don't It's gonna be fine by me. Mrs. Smith's apple pie. Mm -mm. I got it. It's hot. You gotta let it cool off. Perfect. Perfect. Mm. Come on over here and tell the people what you think. Mm. Y'all. <laughs> you know, once upon a time, there was a gold rush. <laughs> and when people found gold that were static, she struck gold, and I'm ecstatic. Is it good? It's good. It's real good. That crust is banging. It's good. It's all about the crust. I have eaten this whole pie. I don't cry because it's that good. Y'all. I've been in the kitchen for some hours. <laughs> I have made homemade hoagie rolls, homemade apple pie, cooked dinner, sat down and ate, washed dishes a couple of times. Gotta wash some more. Well, my son's gonna wash them. He washes dishes at night. But usually when I have like a big cooking day, I usually wash all like my cooking stuff so it's not that and extra. One. So I want my stuff to be in the same condition and put up in the same place where it's supposed to be. You know, you know what I mean. Anyway, I feel like I've been with y'all all day. Hopefully this video is not going to be like two hours long. But thank you guys for hanging in here with me. I know some of you were probably screaming at the phone. Put your comments down below. The way I started this video three or four hours ago and how I felt and the way I feel now, I feel very accomplished. I got over my fear and it turned out well. My sub rolls, the taste, my son ate it, my husband ate it. They're so soft, great texture, great everything. I just gotta nail down the shape. This pie crust, game changer. So tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make up some pie crust and put them in my freezer. They will, that way I will have them. So we'll go ahead and do that and that's it, y'all. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I want to encourage you, if there is a fear of something that you have, whether it's starting seeds for the first time or planting in a new medium or cooking or baking or whatever it is, let this be your encouragement today to just get in there and do it. Get it done, fear and all. You may not have an audience like me that you want to turn the camera on for. You may want to do it in your own private corners. 
that's okay. Just get it done. Don't let, excuse me, don't let fear be your enemy and take over and keep you from learning a skill that you know that you want to learn, but you're afraid to try. Because worst case scenario, here was my backup plan. If those sub rolls did not turn out right, then we were going to have hamburgers and fries, right? I got the stuff for the hamburgers, buns, and all that stuff. So that was the game plan, a quick change if the sub rolls didn't turn out right. If the pie crust didn't turn out right, then oh well. Apple pie wasn't even on the menu tonight. I just went ahead and did it because I had the pie crust. But I could have just not had the pie, right? And I would have tried it again. But at the end of the day, what would I have lost? Some flour and a couple other ingredients. So that, all that to say is that what is the worst case scenario? Do something that you are intimidated by that you fear. This is your encouragement. Thank you guys so much for joining with me today. I feel like I was all over the place in my emotions and in everything that I just, because I was not confident. And you can tell how somebody presents when they're confident about something versus when they're not. But I allowed you to see the good, the bad, and the ugly and to see my true way of how I am when I'm not comfortable because I want you to be able to relate and to resonate. So anyway, thank you guys so much. Remember, gardening is a journey. Building a homestead is a journey. A new way of life or living more simply is a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.